Away we go. Away we go. <laughs> Welcome to High Gluttony, everyone. I'm Becca. And I'm Gretchen. And this is our very first episode. Woo! Uh, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we hope you'll join us for our food and cannabis and cocktail and other food, re- <laughs> cannabis, and cocktail-related adventures <laughs> that we may have along the way. And then one more cannabis, food, cocktail <laughs> adventures. <laughs> time, even it up. <laughs> then, and then also cannabis, cocktail, <laughs> maybe some wine. There maybe wine every once in a while. Problem. Yeah, lots of fun things <clears throat> that we're interested in. Yeah, we're, we're interested in them. We want to talk about them. We want to talk about them with other people. But, but to, to start with, so that I'm a little socially lubricated and maybe not <laughs> as stiff, I'm going to do a mad Gretchenist experiment, as we've decided to call it, in creating a cocktail that I have never created before. So we'll see how good I do, right? That's exactly right. And not just any cocktail, because... One of the reasons we call Gretchen's project, Mad Gretchenist Experiment, is because she often has lots of infused things floating around of different varieties filled with cannabis. (laughs) This is going to be a mostly um, handcrafted cocktail today um, because I'm I'm using a little bit of my ginger beer, homemade ginger beer. Okay. Um, These are things I think will go well together, so we're just kind of putting them together because I was like on a cocktail with more alcohol because it's been a fucked up kind of week and I am ready to get my drink on Um, unfortunately I don't have anything with cannabis infused into it but um we'll just homemade ginger beer counts yeah Yeah. but homemade ginger beers so I've also got some peach ice cubes actually I've got a peach ice peach ice chunk (laughs) cool this pro- I probably should shake this up, but I use my, my good shaker uh, for my coffee today. So, oh, well. It's really, I just use mason jars for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so then the, the alcohol I'm throwing in here is a peach cello. So I took all the skins off some peaches that I had and infused those into vodka. It smells pretty good. It smells like candy. Wait, just the skins? Yeah, just the skins. So you like peel the skins off and then put the skins in there. So it's like making limoncello where you just take the, the, ze- like the zest the off. Rye. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm using, the one I'm using in particular from when I did a big batch of peeling peaches. So I blanched them. So that actually, like I think the color as far as that goes is actually a little bit nicer because it kept a little bit more of that sort of fresh color to it versus... I bet I have lime cubes somewhere in my freezer, but I'm just going to use up this lime. So it's homemade ginger beer, homemade peach cello. Yep. And homemade peach ice cubes and a splash of ginger. I'm sorry, a splash of lemon. No, lime. Excuse me. Lime. Lime. Yeah, I'm going to Because I was at the store this morning and forgot to get lemons. Fuck. Oh, well. Meanwhile, I have a bourbon and ginger ale. Yeah. Pretty complicated. Yay. All right, but I guess I better stir this. This seems like it might need a stir. Um, so. It sounds delicious. It's, I hope it's going to be good. I've been doing a lot of fruit ice cubes and ginger beer, so y'all can look forward to uh, our ginger beer episode uh, coming up soonish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when we figure out when. Right, because full disclosure, we've already recorded a couple of episodes and then finally figured out what our format might be. And so we're now recording our welcome episode. Because <laughs> sometimes you got to run some trials. <laughs> to figure great. out what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Trial and error. <laughs> I love it. Well, cheers. Cheers to getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So just relaxing for an hour or so, just hanging out. Just, just chilling. Yeah. I guess, is it time to... <laughs> do 
Should we tell people why we wanted to do this? Where I where? guess so. Is it that time? Is it that time? Should we, is it origin time or? I don't know. Origin could be fun. We could just start way back. Just, uh, which apparently was back, back even further than I thought, because I, a, a high gluttony originated and I believe we discovered it was 2015. So right. <laughs> a while ago, it's been a minute. <laughs> it really originated as dinner parties, which someday I hope to resume <laughs> co-sponsored by our friend who is a person who likes to eat well, not that we don't. <laughs> own but uh he he has better funding than we do so <laughs> he gets to take it up a little bit of an extra level i definitely encourage him because every time we get together it seems like there's uh you know we take take it from one level to this whole yeah. other fucking level that's another thing that we <laughs> bring into the podcast is like how to you know think about your food in a little bit different way some small things that you can do at home well you know, add another level of flavor to what you're doing or just take your culinary experiences to the next level. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call them your pantry power-ups because yep. we also like video games. So we thought it would be fun to kind of gamify our podcast. Yeah. So there's just a little bit of that infused in, in a few spaces. The, pan the pantry power-up, which can include things like truffle salt because... Have you had truffle salt popcorn? <laughs> Good. You really, really should. <laughs> yeah. To, you know, slightly more involved things like ginger beer, which is mostly for drinking, but also like I made some fruit ice cubes this week and put a little bit of ginger beer in them. So just to make them a little bit more liquidy and just to see what would happen. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> Bad gotcha, yeah. see. Yep, Mad Gretchen, this experiment mm -hmm. are happening all the time. Exactly. So. Mostly these parties, though, were just a way for a group of friends to get together, to smoke a shit ton, to eat a shit ton of, like, really good food, really good cannabis, really good conversation. And that is where the mindset of high gluttony was founded. Because high gluttony is about relaxing, cooking, smoking, and learning a few things along the way. <laughs> exactly. So we, we do try like a fair variety of cuisines, though we will own right up front. We are two white ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Just trying to make food that sounds interesting to us. And let's face it, a lot of white food is real boring. <laughs> So we're all over the place. But we do hope that part of this is that you will send us recipes that we should try out that maybe have a story or a connection to your family or your past and just ways that we can learn more about cultures and people through food. Yes, because that's, that's how I like to learn about, I'll learn about uh, everything. I mean, one of my favorite, thing to do, favorite things to do in a, any country is go to the grocery store. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. What's in the store? <laughs> and what? As many times as possible. Yeah. So. As many times a day as possible. <laughs> is that a food shop? Is that a food shop? <laughs> I go in the food shop? <laughs> I love grocery shopping. I think that's <laughs> the few things in COVID world that I, I miss the most is just being able to go walk into a grocery store at any time. And meander. And meander and not feel like I have to run in and run out and miss it. I do, I do like grocery delivery. That is not bad either. <laughs> different type of experience. Different, different thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. we, uh, we also felt part of, part of this um, also was to, we want to, you know, contribute to the destigmatization of cannabis and cannabis culture. And as we've, we've decided, and I've seen a lot lately about people coming out of the cannabis closet, <laughs> that cultural appropriation yep. from- um, LGBTQ community. Yeah, and with that, I mean, that feels, it feels a little appropriate-y, but I mean, other people have been using it and I think it's a good term, so. Yeah, it's appropriate um, for this because- <laughs> 
there are many people in my life who don't know that I smoke. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm getting up there. I think uh, it might be, you know, it's not going to shock too many people. I don't know. <laughs> there might be a few people that are a little surprised, but those are relatively new people in my life. So. And I don't generally hide it. It's just something mm-hmm. that if I gauge that maybe you're not so into, I don't uh, just assault you with my love of cannabis. <laughs> So that's part of this, I guess, is just normalizing it that, you know, you can enjoy it anytime you need it. You can enjoy it anytime you want it and you can be safe with it and you can be healthy with it and you can just smoke the fuck out of really good stuff and talk to your friends and make food together. Exactly. (laughs) Keep learning more. We do like learning. Yes. Because, I mean, so far, this has been very educational. I mean, like... Mm -hmm. It's sort of a shockingly. Yeah. Shockingly, I did actually go to culinary school, but I feel sadly that I have not um, really utilized my culinary career as much as I could have. But th- this is not entirely my fault, I will say, um, because I, I graduated from culinary school, and then within a couple months, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. So I had really bad knees <laughs> like bad and my hands had been a problem even before that and they didn't realize what was going on and it wasn't until um my knees started to go because it was first in my hands and wrists so they just assumed it was carpal tunnel but nobody thought to themselves hey it's kind of weird that a 17 year old has carpal tunnel so i can be a little mad about that but absolutely um so part of, part of my enthusiasm for cannabis is that um, I've found a couple different strains over the years that have really helped with pain relief and, um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis. There's a pretty strong link to people having depression and anxiety along with that, which has been a fairly major component of my life. And, you know, to a point where I didn't realize how depressed I was until I started taking the right amount of antidepressants. Uh, Also, if you're offended by cursing, I mean, this not the podcast for you because I apparently can't stop cursing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's one of my family. Skills. Yeah, it's family fun, but it's maybe not totally family appropriate. <laughs> Depends on the family. <laughs> so you know, I I am definitely somebody who has used cannabis medicinally, and I'm a big advocate for the, you know, doing more research and learning more about it and just figuring out what works best because really that's, that's how it it all shakes out is like, Mm -hmm. what, what makes things better for you? Absolutely. Um, Whereas I had like, I was terrified of it growing up. My parents were super religious and we were always told like to definitely like no drugs, no alcohol, like nothing. And, um, So I still went through college and still didn't like still sort of stayed away from it. And then it wasn't until I was with you, Gretchen, that we were hanging out and I like got really high for the first time. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know that I could feel like this. I didn't know that I could be so relaxed. I had no idea that I could like turn off my brain for a few minutes. So it was incredible. And so ever since then, I've been wanting to. I have been using it ever since then, and I have been trying to learn more about it. It's hard when it's not completely accessible, it's not completely affordable, and it's not something that is studies as, studied as much as it should be. So it's, it's been kind of a journey, I think, for anyone who's been using it to navigate how to know what is working for you, how to know what you're even using, how to know how to track it it's just been unfortunately just like such a such a stigmatized part of our society and we'll investigate later there's a lot of reasons for that I'm sure we'll talk about later well yeah I mean like I I'm very excited for the fact that we are in the the world now definitely seems to be taking a bit of a different view on it I mean there are definitely this those staunch people that are like it's terrible it's a gateway drug Let me tell you, if this is a gateway drug, I've been smoking pot since I was 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. And I've never done any other kind of drug. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. 
in all of the time that I've been doing it, which again hasn't been since I was 17, but it's been a few years now. I have I've never I've never done anything else except for like I don't know how much to disclose here. I mean, like, like every once in a while, I've done like half of an ecstasy pill or something, but yeah. or mushroom, some mushroom, but that's not even a drug, I think. So I, I and I have not done either of those. Uh, so I'm contemplating well, I guess, hunting with those yeah. things. I haven't gotten there yet, and I'm locked in my house right now. So you know, <laughs> uh. <laughs> it'll be a little while before that journey can start. <laughs> very encouraged by some of the stuff with like the psychedelics and things where mm -hmm. they're you know experimenting more with like microdosing and um so I, I definitely want to learn about that as well because you know they they talk about like it just like completely can reset your brain and yeah. like, you know it's like that sounds great <laughs> yeah it can help with ptsd it can help with trauma it can help with all sorts of things but that's, a, I mean, that's like something like ayahuasca or something. It's like right. what I'm imagining. And that's like, I guess it's worth it. But <laughs> that's a long night. <laughs> that's, like, so that's, that's, that's not something I feel like you can just do off the cuff. It's like, it's got, you can't prepare yourself. You got to prepare. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, it's like a therapy blitz and no one's prepared for that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You know, we wanted to talk more about the cannabis side of things, yeah. make sure that we're providing a bit of education on that because that's, there's more information out there than there's ever been. Yeah, Boy. absolutely. And it should be legalized and it should be decriminalized and destigmatized. And we want to explore more about how to make that happen. Yeah. We, we feel strongly about getting some social justice in here too. Mm -hmm. um, just... So we need to uh, take a serious look at all of our systems and perceptions around so many things. Yeah, so, absolutely. But I don't know. What, what's your favorite, favorite way to consume cannabis? I think it's a joint. That was kind of how I started when I was like smoking on my own for the first time in the evenings, you know. I would roll a joint. I would smoke like a, four, a third of it. And I'd just be like golden for a couple hours until that time and so having that takes me back to that time of just being by myself being in the city tot just like early days of smoking so the high is like super strong still <laughs> and like so uh, but these days I mostly just do a pipe just because it's easy it's easy yeah like yeah what about you I don't know I think I I gotta say I'm definitely well especially right now I I mostly smoke right now and I'm, I'm into my little journey with my vape pens at the moment with the figuring out which of those I really like the taste is just a bit better it smells a bit better I just haven't found the perfect vape for flat for dried flour you know like sure uh, aside from the one that I gave you but my main complaint about that one is that it their setup with it <laughs> right exactly I went through a phase for a while of using a pack and then something else I can't remember and it was nice but then I guess I don't know I kind of just felt like I wasn't getting the same like punch that I would get from a pipe yeah so I mean I think that's possible because I think it depends on how how much you're heating it to so if you're not getting as high of a heat from your vaporizer, you're probably not getting that conversion of the, the TH, what was it when we figured it out? THCA? To THC. To THC. So maybe if your vape's not got enough heat to it, that that might affect it. So whereas if you burn that shit up, that <laughs> nothing's left. Like it's, you're going to get all of it. So I don't know. I, I do like a good edible every once in a while but I think I mean I'm, I'm really right now I'm just really jonesing to vaporize just mm -hmm. I think also because of the wildfires and I'm like so sensitive to this outside smoke that I'm like this can't be good to be smoking like this <laughs> like well this is it like adding extra smoke to the the burning state that you're in the burning state of California 
Well, that is a nice segue to talk about what we cook in our first pantry power up or what we, I'm sorry, what we caramelize. We decided our first episode is going to be about this recipe I discovered earlier this year that I now cannot live without having (laughs) toasted sugar in my house. We're going to give credit to Serious Eats because they... Uh, they have the good stuff on their website. <laughs> so I actually came across this in, in, in a, a, um, an episode, a recipe for cookies. They make these like big ass chocolate chip cookies. What is it? Levan style or something like that. The really thick one. Yeah, they're really thick. Like, because they're what? Like, supposed, they're supposed to measure out like six ounce cookies or something like that. They're, yeah, they're massive. huge. We decided that uh, this was a really perfect way to bring you in because having this toasted sugar, it's it's pretty easy uh, as far as method goes. So it's a really good introduction to doing something that's just going to elevate what you're making that little bit more. I don't know. Did you feel like it it changed your life, Becca? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. And it's just so fun to use it all the time because... I open it and I smell it and I can see the color and I can just like remember the the labor <laughs> that went into it, even though it's not difficult. I was just like proud of it. And so every time I use it, I'm just, I just feel really like, this is a really special thing. Yeah. <laughs> like now, now the dish is extra special. <laughs> <coughs> Uh-oh. <coughs> <laughs> it's that time. Zoomed. We- yeah. <laughs> bit of pot Mm -hmm. Becca sticking with her traditional pipe what what are you what strain are you smoking today I meant to look this up before I got here before I did this because um it's indica and it's from the um dispensary we went to a couple weekends ago but I can't remember we threw away the jar that it came in so I'm trying I'm gonna look it up you threw away a jar how not a jar it was a little package like a Okay. <laughs> just like a little field packet. Improper storage, not proper. Exactly, yeah. I would never throw away a jar. <laughs> I smack you. <laughs> I know. I'm repurposing a peanut butter jar for a mason jar. <laughs> nice. <laughs> James, actually. But anyway, yeah. Okay, so what are you enjoying? I'm having, so I'm enjoying one of these Leun, which I'm going to have to look up how to pronounce this. L-U-N-E. Okay. Vape pens, which is a women-owned company. Um, I will have to look up more information on that as well because these are ridiculously good. <coughs> they make these really nice all-in-one vaporizers. <coughs> Hold on. Wow, this got you. <laughs> these get these. I still haven't learned like the proper amount. <coughs> <laughs> To, to draw on one of those yet. Yeah. I'm still get. I'm getting there. So it comes in this cute little package. Like it's a little metal box, which might be one of my favorite things about it. Not to mention that the product itself is amazing. So the one I'm having right now is Desert Gold. And on the side of the box, this is the one that says Create. And I definitely used this midweek and was like, writing all kinds of shit, like feeling super creative. I was like, oh, okay, this works. This is a good one. (laughs) Write it down, write it down. But you can hang this on a magnet. (laughs) You can always find it. (laughs) So I've got it hooked to the side of my audio cart. Oh my God, it's perfect. So that one I smoked on Wednesday when we talked. Mm Mm-hmm. And like was terrible for productivity. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> great for spacing out and watching something. Terrible for productivity and me being able to converse. So, terrible for a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible for a meeting. Won't do that. Won't make that mistake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to say, I am on board with this company because the packaging's fantastic. Mm hmm. The vape itself is so cute because it's just, <laughs> I've showed it to you, right? Like, yeah, look it up at home, everybody. Yeah, it's, they've, they've na- nailed whatever they're doing here. <laughs> I, like the other one, I 
like all three of them, but obviously knowing when to use them. So <laughs> I get to right. live my life. Otherwise, I get real depressed when I start, stop being able to move. Yeah, well, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> oh, shit. Hold on. I got to get over the hump of the initial high. Okay. Getting a little well, I'll tell you, I found out what I'm smoking. Okay. This is the um, Star Killer Indica, and it is a THC range of 21 to 25. I think ours was like 22. Okay. It's nice. It's a really nice body high. I, w- I wish I had mixed up a little more hybrid before we did this, but here we are. Well, I had a bit of this earlier too, because I was like, I knew I had to write show outlines. So I was like, that helped. It helped <clears throat> at some point when I was doing something with this earlier this week, <laughs> but I was high. So I don't remember exactly which thing it is, but I'll remember when I see it. It'll come back. Okay. okay so we were talking about sugar. Yes. We were <laughs> sugar. So excited to talk about the sugar. Although I was hoping to get some research done on crystallization and how that works, but I can only learn so many things in one day. And I learned a lot about caramel when I was going, I was going through on food and cooking today. So I'm going to share. Yeah. I can't wait. Now that we're coming back to the food part. Right. Cause we said, we've been saying that it, is a complicated process, but I don't think we've really dug into why or what that means. Long. It's long. It's not long. Yeah, it's long. You're right. Yeah. It's mostly just long. And especially if you like to get stoned, very <laughs> important to set timers. Good news yep. is co- cooking interval stays the same. So like you can kind of gauge. It gets finicker towards the end. Um, yeah, so the longer it's in the oven, actually, the, the shorter your intervals will probably be. Okay, because the recipe says to cook it for, they say, one to five hours, right? Right. How yeah. long have you done it before? So I did a batch that ended up taking like 10 hours because I, well, I figured out that what I had done initially was I was like, I put on con- convection bake because I was like, well, let's see you know most recipes don't get really specific about if you have convection bake or not convection apparently doing it in a convection oven either now the factor i don't know is because i don't think my oven thermometer was in there when i was doing it oh i don't know what the actual internal temperature of the oven was on this Mm -hmm. And I probably haven't done enough convection bake measurements overall. Can you talk to me about what convection means? So it's a fan moving the air around. So it's, it's like supposed to make it more even. You usually use it more with base goods. Okay. Because um, otherwise the way that, the way that heat works. <laughs> Magic. Because now I'm going to explain how an oven works in case anyone's curious. And we'll figure <laughs> later like are we going too far off the track i don't think we are this is i just don't i don't really understand the difference most ovens usually have two heating elements in them because so you've got a broil function okay it's the you know the flame shooting out of the top okay and then i don't know why i needed a sound effect well it i mean it really put me in the moment i was really just broiling something in my mind (laughs) <laughs> and you're more you have a something that's under the panel of your the bottom of your oven okay like a giant burner or so the broils at the top big then, burner at the bottom yeah and so your heat just really works uh, i probably need to do me, more research on thermodynamics but <laughs> i don't even know if that's the right word <laughs> I got too high. I'm sorry. Let's go back to how your oven works. So you got it at the top. You know, it's exposed flame. Okay. Then you have your big heater in the bottom that's under the bottom panel. Like, and if you have a gas oven, you can, it'll kind of glow. You'll see like like, a coil. Yeah. And if you have an electric, it's a big electric heating element that's under there. Okay. But then heat basically goes up. So you're basically Mm -hmm. just getting that heat in one direction. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm not even sure if this is going to be right, but this is how I think of it. So maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. In a convection oven, you have a fan that blows. So it moves the heat sort of more all around the oven. So it, the, the goal is to cook it more evenly because the entire oven is the same temperature. Right. The year of okay. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm going to stop talking now because I'm going to have okay. all kinds of crazy ideas about how it works. And Okay. We, we may or may not ever come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. So if I find out that the way I'm thinking of it is correct, we can come back to that later and we can go over thermodynamics more thoroughly. Yippee. Why do I keep giving myself more homework to do? I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I mean, thermodynamics, we don't even, you could just tell me. It heats up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's be more in depth than I was not planning on kind of explaining how an oven works today. That wasn't part of my plan. I know. I threw you a total curveball. <laughs> and I don't know how many people know that's how it I think it's it's good info. It's good to sort of have. It helps me. I'm always gonna remember that. I hope it's right. <laughs> right yeah but you know like if you see diagrams with heat like you know the heat has a little squiggly arrow that goes up so that's just totally <laughs> what i'm picturing totally. my brain that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> um the official sound of high gluttony yeah that's our oven heating up temperature rising or i mean heat rising time travel <laughs> what else is it <laughs> I don't know, but probably more to come. <laughs>
into this like hugely complex series of chemicals and compounds and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. So you just heat this sugar up for a long time at a slow heat and it just transitions into this like super complex thing. Yeah. You know, and it just smells so good. Like, I mean, it's like one of those things you could do around the holidays and it was before a party or something and like make the whole house smell like just fucking candy. So, yeah, um, totally. Oh, that is such a good suggestion. This, this stuff is dangerous. Yeah. And it just becomes such a beautiful color and texture. And it's just fascinating to watch it evolve. Yeah, because you're touching it, you know, so you leave it in the oven for an hour and then you get it out and stir it. And then you put it back in the oven for another 30 minutes and then you come back and stir it and 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes until you've reached your desired level of toastiness. Send us your photos. If you decide to do this too, let us know how it works for you and where you're at and what it looks like. And that'd be great because we're still learning. And, um, one of the things that we forget a lot is the difference in altitude between where Gretchen and I are. So when you make caramel or if you're making candy, what type of candy tells you how much you have to cook your sugar to what temperature? It's always a good thing to look up before you start making something like fudge. I mean, most recipes will give you the right temperature range, but yeah, you need to think about where you're, I guess that's like a good thing that like people, when they are testing recipes, if you could provide that data as well, like if you're at this height, you know, like. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like Amer even like I come to think of it, like I don't even think America's Test Kitchen provides what altitude they test at. Yeah, just because yeah. every thousand feet you get, it was like, it was two degree, you can subtract two degrees from the temperature so from the, from the boiling point yeah from the boiling point what does a boiling point mean in this situation where you're like toasting something I, well so when you traditionally make caramel you put sugar and water together in a pan um, in a pan and cook it for a really long time because but you cook it at like a low temperature yeah so when we're cooking it at a low temperature because theoretically you I bet this is their quick toasting method is to do it on the stove on like a low heat. And you just have to stand there and constantly stir, I assume. Quick toasting with sugar. Hmm? Quick toasting for the sugar. Yeah. Not making caramel. Just yep. like quick toasting the sugar. Okay. If you could do it on the stove, if you just had it on a low heat and constantly stirred. Ugh. Sounds like a word. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like too much work. I would much rather do the long, low heat in the oven. Um, go do some yoga. Yeah. Go to bowl. Back, watch an episode like Parks and Rec or something. Exactly. I've been doing a lot of House Hunters International. So, okay. So when you're making caramel the regular way on the stovetop, it's sugar, water, low temperature, stir often. Um, so typically you don't stir because if you stir it, it tends to I'm having trouble with that words coming out of my mouth thing again. Sure. That's yeah. Only I could just project straight from my brain. <laughs> One day. One day. We'll have such high production value. We will be able to create animated shorts and. Oh yeah, that too. I was also thinking like, we'll just like telepathy other one day yeah there was this um I wish I can remember who put it I saw it on Twitter and it was somebody saying in reference to Elon Musk's one of his new ideas is like a like a auditory experience where it like puts the sound directly into your brain or something and this guy responded with like I have been thinking about this nonstop since the announcement isn't that what your ears do? <laughs> that just summed up all the reasons why I hate Elon Musk. But like, I just thought that was so funny because we're trying to like figure out all these ways to do all these technologies for things that like our body already does. 
Yeah, it's one of those, I want to do it because I can, not because there's any real point to it. Like Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we're like... We're all over the place. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Welcome to High Gluttony. This is like, if this isn't really a culminating welcome episode, then I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so when you make caramel on the stovetop, you don't typically stir it. Um, just because, I mean, the water kind of helps the, you know, heat distribute evenly, you know, because like it creates a syrup. So you're creating a syrup, but the, if, if you're stirring it, you're putting utensil in and out of there. You're raising your risk of car- caramelization because like if you introduce some like little bit of like uncrystallized sugar into something that you've like started to get into the candy stages. <clears throat> it'll recrystallize. So that's when you've got caramel sauce that's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> and does that mean when it's like thick still or good crunchy still when it doesn't have that like smooth texture? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It has to do with how the, the crystals reform. And I guess, you know, the water helps create something smooth. Anyway, I, as I was trying to say that I did not fully fully read that (laughs) (laughs) I think I got it so it's part of the process of the of the thermal decomposition yes is this need to keep all the same things together sure sure (laughs) Sure. (laughs) sorry can't be more exact than that because I'm not 100% sure but it sounds good. It sounds right. <laughs> we'll correct ourselves if we... we or we, just let us know what we don't know. Yeah. We, yeah. Please talk to us about it. So Thank I you. ended up doing mine for about uh, three and a half hours before I got tired and called it a night. <laughs> I think I took mine to at least five or six. I'm not 100% certain. Yeah. I mixed it with, I had a little bit left from a time I had made it before when I had done it for, I think, closer to five hours. Yeah. And so it's fun to still see, like, the little bit of the old stuff that's just just noticeably darker, you know, yeah. than the new stuff. And it's kind of like a, like a cinnamon toast crunch or something, you know, like that, like, swirl. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I was going to say, what, one of my favorite, like, side benefit of doing this, this sugar caramelization is to, like, slightly, lar- like, I keep ending up with, like, some larger p- bits that, like, just don't break up in the, um, mm-hmm. that word I can never freaking remember, because I want to call it a roboku, and it's <laughs> food processor. <laughs> food processor. Oh, in the, <clears throat> that's what you called it before. <laughs> food processor. <laughs> So there's just a certain amount that like it's either melted a little bit or you know they're it's just like too hard. I usually sieve mine as well, like so I put it oh. and then I sieve it out. And mm-hmm. so there's like the nice fine sugar, which I just use as like regular sugar, and then I have these like little pieces. Um, and mostly, my idea is to make choquettes at some point and put use that. Ooh. But the larger pieces make delightful sugar cubes for my coffee so oh I bet delicious and I put a, a vanilla bean in there so they're like a little bit vanilla scented what okay what you just put it in the oven like on top or something no after you brown it up just put it in the with the sugar just like store it with it mm-hmm. ah, mad Gretchen this experiment that sounds amazing so this is how you can legit make vanilla sugar also get more use out of your vanilla bean so if you ever come across these where you just scrape it and you don't actually use the pod itself to infuse Uh uh-huh you can take the um vanilla the pod and then put it in with some sugar and it'll smell like it makes your sugar smell like vanilla so you just scrape it out right for for some recipes you just scrape the seeds out and use the seeds Mm -hmm. Um, now you do have recipes where you scrape, scrape the seeds out and use the pod to infuse. I've actually started even 
the ones I do like use to infuse, I started washing them off and then drying them. And they still have a pretty good amount of like vanilla aroma to them. You dehydrate them again. Cool. I mean, it's not as nice as a fresh actual vanilla bean, but I mean, and you could put like a, a whole vanilla bean without scraping it in there, but it'll dry out the vanilla bean. So like then if you mm. want to use it, it's just like this, you can't scrape it. It's... <laughs> possible I've done it I've done it when I've not had any vanilla in the house and I knew that I had like a couple of pieces of vanilla in my vanilla sugar so (laughs) it's a doable thing it's doable it's doable so yeah so I'm extra fancy I've just powered up our pantry power up even further (laughs) yeah definitely well from the beginning with your peach cello and homemade ginger beer I mean is already elevated. This is just, this is how I live, people. <laughs> this is how I live. And this is how we're all going to learn how to live, if you want. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, yeah. I mean, it's just, I choose to spend my money on food. Yeah. And <laughs> time. And time. This is what I spend my money on. Right. Well, I think this has been successful. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean, because. I think so. Just long, slow, a slow, long, slow. <laughs> a slow, long, slow. Slow. Slow, long. long. Slow, long, slow. Yeah, we've got our ovens preheated to 300 degrees. Mm-hmm. And then also, I've got my 9 by 13 glass dish here. Oh my god, I think we have the same one. Oh, except yours is blue. That's pretty. Yeah, it's got a little blue tint, which is pretty. Yeah, but, uh, I like Otherwise, that. we have the exact same. It's the exact same. Uh, and our four pounds. I'm doing four pounds. I don't know how much you're doing. I'm just going to do start with two and see how much that fills the base. Okay. <laughs> so we'll go from there. Yeah, because <laughs> it, would, it would be kind of interesting to see, like, the difference between, because I've only made full batches, and I know there's a way to do some smaller, you know, batches. So I, it'll be interesting to see if there's a difference, because it won't be as much, you know, volume for, for you to heat. Mm-hmm. Right in the pan. I'm going to get out a, a sheet pan and put the, I found that to make less of a mess when I stir it, I usually put it on a sheet pan too, so that at least the sugar falls into a sheet pan. Oh, right. Because with this recipe, so we cook it for anywhere from what, one to four hours, right? Or five or something? Yeah, I think. But you I have mean, to sorry. stir it. Yeah. You have, you have to, to stir, stir it every 30 minutes. Right. After the first hour. There's a, an hour where it's just getting up to temperature and stuff. But. Yeah, because we're taking just regular white sugar cane sugar and caramelizing it right that's the yeah. official process y- word? yes that is the official word for it <laughs> so melting is just you're changing the state of the item the, like water to steam where you're not impacting the actual chem- chemical composition of water but thermal decomposition is a little bit more like composting because the chemical reaction is actually breaking down the molecular bonds that are inside your sugar to change it into something completely different. So basically you're creating a whole new thing. It's not even sugar anymore. We're giving not life to something sugar. new. Yeah. Sugar birth. Yeah. Caramel birth. <laughs> so we're both going to take pictures of the sugar throughout the process. Yes. Now I'm going to pop mine in the oven. All right, let's do it. Be all ready to go. And then we'll have an hour. So we're thermally decomposing our sugar. What a great Uh, word. That is a really great word. I really prefer that to, uh, I'm never going to say melting again. Melting? No. We don't melt things. Yeah. We thermally decompose them. Yeah, we do. (laughs) Ask me about my thermal decomposition. (laughs) Have you thermally decomposed anything today? (laughs) wonder what else (laughs) that you you don't actually cook you thermally decompose (laughs) well how would you do you thermally decompose cannabis that's a really good question well it's not it so this calls it a chemical reaction so i don't know if it's exactly the same i'll have to do a little bit of research as a thermo decomposition yeah because basically when you cook with cannabis and you do the decarboxylation process which is 
you know, basically warming, warming your pot up to, to make it so that the non-psychoactive compound in cannabis, which is tetrahydrocannabinolic acid into the psychoactive tetrahydrocannabinolic THC. Yep. <laughs> There it is. Go from THCA to THC. So when you're you're heating it, any heating is, yeah. So it's changing that chemical because thermal decomposition is a conversion of a chemi- of the chemical. Mm-hmm. Therefore, yeah, there are it's actually kind of. a similar process. Um, okay. which is why so you have to toast it to get the buzz and makes it taste better, according to this. Which then they compare that to toasting nuts and spices and things like that to get them to to release the flavors more. So I mean, it's basically a very similar process. You are more correct than you would have known. And I love I was, it. I, I had a sneaking suspicion because I was like, there's something, there's some reason you have to do that. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> it has to do with <laughs> activating something, but what are you actually <laughs> activating? So there you go. That's, I love uh, it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and read this page more in depth later. Get some more knowledge. Brought to you by the, the cube of tiny post-it notes that I found. I like that it looks like a rainbow on the side. Oh yeah. Well, gotta have many colors because I, I, I'm addicted to putting color on things. It just makes my life a lot easier. True. (laughs) So that's what we're doing here today. Process similar of taking your cannabis and toast when you decarboxylize that and then add it to either alcohol or fat. Uh, Then you get your basis for many, many delicious cannabis lace treats. Yeah, which we will be making many of at yes. some point. At some point, when yeah. we decide what we're going to make. So yeah. <laughs> we it be infused simple syrup or infused alcohol. Ice cream. We could make ice cream. I've never made ice cream, pot ice cream before. That could be my, fun. You know, that what would be really good is mm. if my, my harvest of jelly bean turns out well this year. That has such a beautiful, like, passion fruit kind of note to it. Mm-hmm. All right. Think about that one. Write it, write it down. We'll write forget down. otherwise. Oh, wait. Yeah, we will. <laughs> I need to write that down. You're right. I'm like, no, I'll totally remember that. <laughs> Not at all. No. No, I won't. <laughs> Jelly bean. <laughs> Jelly bean passion fruit ice cream. Because, yeah, we could even just infuse cream with it. Oh, cool. Because uh, there's enough fat and cream to mm-hmm. pull out the, the THC. So yeah, I really need to learn more be... about that, too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll read up. You'll read up. We'll read up. <laughs> we'll read up a little yeah. bit. So basically, we'll just be kind of talking a little bit today and then checking in on our sugar every yeah. half an hour. Yeah. I did set a timer for an hour. Okay. Now you're you're probably going to have to rely a little bit more on smell and I really mm-hmm. wish we could figure out how to transfer smells through digital media. <laughs> uh-huh. um, someday we'll be able to do that, I'm sure. Sure. I hope yeah. A little brain stimulation somehow. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like a thing you stick up your nose and it like pushes on different receptors and you're like, it's got these little like things. I don't know what I'm trying trying to say. I think, yeah, you're onto something though. I'm onto something here. (laughs) So we're time traveling a little bit uh, because we've jumped ahead to almost an hour of our sugar being in the oven. Haven't haven't really, mine's not uh, particularly aromatic yet. Which is sad. no, no. Can you yours is? Yeah, I can smell mine. What are you gonna use to to stir it with? I actually just realized I was using my wooden. I wrote my wooden spoon that I usually use. I was using it to stir my ginger beer plant. So I've got my handy dandy bamboo spatula type spoon now. Oh, the bunny's gonna fight. Fight. Girls, don't fight. Oh, no, don't fight, bunnies. This isn't oh. okay. Not okay. It, you can st- kind of start to see the difference. There's a yeah. There's a little bit of a a little bit of a hint, t- different color to it. I didn't stir mine. Oh, Whole purpose getting it out of the oven. Stir <laughs> this thing. Oh, you put it back in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why do we have to stir this every thirty minutes? It's so you're moving it around a little bit, uh-huh. so you're getting uh-huh. your heat distributed. 
hopefully. Okay. Um, it also helps the water escape. There's okay. A little bit of water content in even what looks like dry sugar. So okay. That's just helping it stir around. So that that's the whole the, the two main reasons is. Okay. You're moving it around to get the heat distributed evenly and release let some, some moisture. water escape. What is your oven thermometer in your oven right now? Oh yeah, it's um it's right at 300. Oh, good. which is interesting. Yeah, I have my thermometer where I should not, which is right next to the door. Okay, so I set another timer for 30 minutes. Well, I was gonna leave it in for a long time, but then I realized I have to go and do kitten care for a bit, and I don't know if I can leave it for that while I'm while I'm gone. But I guess I could take it out and put it back in once I got back and continue. I don't know how well that would work. You put yours back in? Yeah. Okay, I got another timer going. Okay, so if we do it to six thirty, mm-hmm. that'll be three hours, and that's the, the that's the minimum. Okay. So we should have really been on the ball about starting yeah but i hadn't thought about that yeah me neither well although yours so you you did less so yours won't actually need to go as long probably oh yeah that's a good because point because you have a, a lower volume and you have and you're using the same size dish as the first time right you did four mm-hmm. pounds I, the first time? I did four pounds yeah mm-hmm. no i did three you did three okay so yeah yours will probably actually be done more quickly okay yeah well that so makes we, sense because i was starting to smell mine a lot sooner than you are yeah so we're gonna need to watch yours because if it starts okay. it should it might start to liquefy much sooner than expected so it says if you, if this happens immediately pour the dried sugar into a large stainless steel bowl leaving the melted caramel behind okay so i'll just keep an eye on it yeah but actually the last time i made it which i you know had done it on a lower temperature or i used my convection bake which like did not work like it did not caramelize in the same way interesting yeah so i know not to use convection bake yeah but i actually when mine was done the last time i actually did that i put at least part of it into a metal bowl and then like tossed it to cool it down a little bit and then added a little more sugar to the bowl and like just to like cool it down a little bit quicker and see if like that helped because I've done it what how many times now four or five six I don't know what at least four I still haven't made my cocktail <laughs> I, haven't I haven't finished my cocktail oh it, that did seem to help a bit because it does clump pretty severely mm-hmm. like regardless it does say if you don't stir it enough but then it's a, another certain point, which I think it might be in the article that's associated with it. She does say that basically it's going to clump no matter what. It doesn't even matter how much you stir. But okay. it did work a lot better with when I took it out of the pan and then let's like tried to cool it down more rapidly. So mm-hmm. mm, well, that's delicious. delicious. But this, this ginger beer is also very spicy. I'm going to throw a little oh. lime in here. <laughs> Wish I, I think I'm out of lime like like ice cubes are you just like squeezing like half lime juice and in, in half water in, into a oh uh, no i wasn't even putting water in it you could do that though like but i like really sour stuff so like <laughs> so you're just filling up an ice cube tray with lime or lemon or whatever juice sure yeah yep okay just okay straight up yeah very cool. but you could also do it where you like measured it out so it's like if you need just like a tablespoon you mm-hmm. measured out a tablespoon into your ice cube tray and like, mm-hmm. and then you could have a bunch of things that you know are exactly a tablespoon. There you and go. There you go. I'm not the only person that has suggested this, I don't think, but maybe well, I am. You're the, maybe I'm you're the one telling me food. about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have um, to read as much shit about food as I do. So yeah, that's true. Constantly reading. Yeah, this is delightful. Good. Food genius. That would be me. <laughs> Gretchen, mad uh, mad Gretchenist experiments. Mad Gretchenist so. experiments. Drunk already off of my ginger beer. Two sips. Two sips, all the tea. It's been two hours. Yeah. Two hours, Mark. My, I am starting to see some color. I'll be interested okay. to put ours, ours side by side, though, because you're doing a mm-hmm. smaller, the, the exact half what I'm doing. So mm-hmm. it'll be really interesting to see if there's color difference. and um, Yeah, exactly. So it'll be kind of interesting. Are you yeah. in the color comparison? Yeah. So I'm doing, I have a bowl of the okay. white sugar that okay, I've good. been just been doing these. Okay. Oh, melon. that works too, doesn't it? Oh, good, because that'll so that'll actually be see. yeah. I was like, okay, so it'll, it'll be because I was just wondering because I'm taking my bowl and setting it on top of the sugar. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's another way to do it, yeah. <laughs> uh, instead, um, <laughs> so I just do it. Oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so this will be nice.
So we're about to check the sugar at the three hour mark. Is that right? It's been three hours? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. It's the D3. It smells so good in here. Oh, the sugar, the color is coming up. So fun. But yeah, I'm definitely going to take mine quite a bit further in my phone. Though. Yeah. So what we're going to do is just sort of wrap this up, but keep uh, toasting, caramelizing our sugar yeah. uh, on our own. So we'll definitely be continuing to take pictures, but we figure you don't really need to hear us uh, continue to just stir our sugar. Stir our sugar <laughs> every half hour. Yeah. <laughs> you for joining us for our first Pantry Power Up episode. And I hope you enjoy the sugar. I'm sorry, not sugar caramel as much as we do don't forget to follow us on instagram and facebook at high gluttony and then our website too which is obviously highgluttony.com and we are super excited we really look forward to being on this journey with you of learning together and exploring together and we cannot wait to share what's next yeah maybe it's something using our toasted sugar i've used it so much everything everything good. everything oh, or just smell it. ah it's not toasted sugar it's caramel <laughs> I know, but that's the episode episode name. I know. <laughs> Misinformation. Already, already we're lying. It is caramel, but it's not caramel. It's granulated caramel. How do you, how, oh, gran, I guess granulated caramel. That was the word I was kept wanting to say crystallized, getting into the dangerous territory. Like, <laughs> oh, that, that, that. <laughs> okay, we got this. Woo! <laughs>